Hello and welcome back yet again. In this chapter, we're going to be digging into my favorite part about Stable Fusion and Generative AI, and that is ControlNet. Because in Stable Fusion, compared to any other tools like Midjourney and Dolly, you have total control of your image. And there are many tools to achieve this. We're going to look at one in particular today, and that is the extension ControlNet. And with it, you're going to be able to take an image like this and replicate the post and just create images like this and this and this. It comes pre-installed on ThinkDiffusion, so let's get to work. We are back inside ThinkDiffusion and here we have a loaded session of Automatic 11.11 and we haven't delved much into all the tabs that are in here. Uh, there is just so much to cover within Stable Diffusion and Think Diffusion. You have all these different extensions that get you total control of your image. And today we're going to look at the one down here, which is named ControlNet. And if you click that, you're going to be able to expand that. And here you have an option to drop an image. And I've prepared an image which is generated. So here we have a ballerina dancing and it's going to be a pretty complex image because of the hands here. They aren't going to be perfect, but that's not the point here. Don't mind the hands. We're going to be replicating her pose. So let's first just drag this image into the little box here. First off, we're going to be using something called open pose. We're going to select open pose here and we're going to make sure that our model here correlates to the model that we're using up here. Now we're not using an Excel model here, which it can be seen as it's not Excel in the name. That means it's a 1.5 model. So then we should use a 1.5 model here. The preprocessor is open pose. And we can see what happens if you press the little icon here. So this is a preprocessor working and the output here will be the open pose. So it reads from our input image, the ballerina here, and outputs this skeleton. Now we're going to enable the control net here. If your image is different from the size that you're going to output, you need to select pixel perfect. As a rule of thumb, you can always use pixel perfect. It's not really going to mess with your image at all. The control weight here is default at one, and that's how much control net will influence your image. You can also select when it starts and when it stops. So if you have here, for example, now we have, I'm gonna change this to 30 sampling steps. So if you set this, for example, to starting control step 0.5, that will mean that 50% of our render open pose will start to work. So at 15 steps, control that will jump in here and then run to the end, as it's at any control step. If we set this to starting to zero, it will start from frame zero and run the whole 30 steps. We can even set the ending control step to 0.5 that will end at 15. We're gonna run it for the whole full 30 steps here. For the control mode and the resize mode, mode here, we're just gonna leave everything default. If you feel that you aren't getting the results that you're looking for, even though you have a high weight and you have full control steps here, starting and ending, you can select control that is more important, but most of the time it's not necessary. So we have the pose here. What are we gonna do with it? Well, let's start off with a prompt here. And let's say cowboy, and we're gonna select 1.5 styles. So I'm gonna load a digital painting and default negatives. We're using a width and height of 512 by 512. I'm gonna select the high res fix here, which is basically an image to image pass. And you can select how much bigger your image is gonna be. And this is upscale by two. So our 512 by 512 is gonna be 1024 by 1024. We're just gonna leave all this default for now, but you can change the steps here to fine tune your results. Most of the time, it's gonna be the denoising strength. You can check one of the previous chapters to learn more about denoising strength. We're gonna create four images here. Now let's get these five images running. As you can see here coming in from the preview, we are getting a similar looking post. But uh, let's get these images finished and uh, catch up with you in a bit. So we have our four images finished now. Here we have our first cowgirl and you can see it's the same pose here. Here we have another one. You can see keeping the same pose. Again, this one keeping the same pose. Here we have some modern LED lights coming in and this one, I mean, that looks fairly okay. The hand up here is a little messed up, but uh, this is really the power of control net and how you can keep a pose consistent. Now, this is only using 
the open post. So this can create any type of image. So we could change this into green monster boy. And let's change something instead of the digital painting. Let's try in the game here, for example. And let's quickly just generate this again. So here we have our results. We didn't really get our monster. We got this uh, green boy here using the same pose in a more of a indie game style here. Yeah, I think it looks uh, looks pretty cool. Now, again, this is just using the open pose. Let us, let's try something different. So let's say, for example, you have an input image where you want to keep the visuals and not just the pose. So you could, for example, load the canny here. And if you click the little preprocessor, you can see the lines. So if you look at this image, for example, you have this jacket and a new hair and everything. If you use a canny, you would stay consistent with what you had here. So let's try this. We're going to change it into futuristic sci-fi astronaut. We are generating again here now for images. And as you can see, as it's coming in live here now, the outlines of her, the woman's body staying consistent with our new astronaut. So this might or might not be good for you. It's gonna be much harder to actually create like an astronaut's outfit or suit. So it's gonna be very slim. You're not gonna be able to have those big, large NASA spacesuits that you can see in the movies. But if you're trying to go for a specific look, this can be a great way of using control nets. And as you can see in our outputs here now, the waist here and, and the legs and everything, is staying consistent to the original. Now, there are more control net options available. One very popular here is the scribble or the sketch. And let me quickly find an input for that. Now here you can use anything that you have drawn, even though it's a very crude sketch like the penguin that I've drawn here. Maybe it also looks like a man inside of a refrigerator, but you can probably draw much better than I can. This is also a great way of taking it child's drawings and making them into great looking art. And if you again press the little icon here, you can see the output. Now, we lost some lines down here, so we could change the scribble to xdog, for example, which will get us a little better looking result. And let's change the prompt here into penguin. Again, make sure that everything is enabled here, and we are gonna generate four new images. And as you can see coming in here live, our little penguin here is matching very well with our crudely drawn sketch. Now, there are ways to getting penguins that are getting a little bit more realistic compared to your sketch here, and that would be to changing the values down here. So I think we're gonna do that for our next step. But first, let's see our images once they are completed. So here we have our penguins, and they are consistent with the sketch that we did. So that's very cool. Let's try a different set of prompts here. Let's select the original photo style and let's actually change here the ending control step. So we're going to leave that to 50% here. So control net is going to run for 15 steps and then it's going to be able to run without the control net. So the point of this is giving control net a base to work with and then for the last 15 steps Stable Fusion is going to have more control to go a little bit beyond your image and that will give you well a better looking result in the end most likely especially if you have drawn as crudely as i have if you're a better sketcher well you can probably run it for the 100 percent duration and look at looking at the results here they're looking a little bit better especially this one i would say looks very good and it's not now as constricted with the body and uh, the arms here or the wings that we had in our original drawing. Now let's remove this. Let's head back to our ballerina input here. And let's, let's look at the depth map here, for example. Now, if you again press the icon, you can see a depth map coming in of the image. And this would be similar to the canny. However, it's still a little different. So you can mix and match. And if canny doesn't work for you, you could try the depth map, for example, as that will give you a different result. You can also use multiple control nets. So if you go into the second tab here, enable this one, you can drag the image in here again. You can select uh, open pose here, for example. So this will give us both the open pose and the depth map. So I recommend you going into your control net and stable fusion inside of Think Fusion. Try what works best for you. I've shown you some of the most popular control nets and how to use them. And I think you're gonna have a great time 
with control it as it's really really powerful that'll be the end of this chapter and i hope you've learned something that you can use while creating your amazing images